Minnesota Timberwolves are 6-0 and oh this postseason. And oh, what a defense. They threw at Denver tonight in a 26-point win. Six straight extends their franchise record. Here's Anthony Edwards from Carl Anthony Towns in Denver. How'd it feel to be back at the five? <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It's better to get a win, so great for us to win. You guys did not have Rudy, obviously. But what did it take to kind of play the, the sort of defense that you guys were able to without your big man in the middle there? Um, um, team defense. Um, we had to switch the game plan up a little bit. But um, big shout out to Cat and Nas. They did a great job of not making us have to double tonight. I mean, they was playing straight up and they played great defense without fouling. So they definitely helped us a lot. You heard that. Yeah, you heard that. Finch was Finch was saying this was one of your guys' best games of kind of playing in tandem. Carl started, uh, got the offense going, and kind of in the, the second half, like picking your spots. How has that kind of grown between the two of you of like knowing when to go? Um, it's fun, man, knowing I got somebody alongside me that, um, you know, can get a bucket at any given time. If he, if he got the hot hand, keep giving it to him. Um, you know, we both are selfish players. Um, we don't care who night it is, whether it, if it's neither one of a neither one of our nights, um, Nas or Jaden or Nikhil or Mike, it doesn't matter, man. Um, in the playoffs, you know, it's, it's always a team win. Um, and Cat did a great job of starting it off tonight because I definitely came out sluggish and slow. But um, you know, eventually Cat gave me some energy and I found it. I've been you've kind of been Nas's vet in in his time here. How? How have you just kind of seen him grow defensively this season mm -hmm. and obviously in what he did tonight? Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's been special. I mean, the sixth man of the year has been special all year, and he's very deserving of that award. Uh, you know, just trying to lead by example, you know, um, to be able to tell someone what to do or give them my insight, I got to be able to go out there and, and execute it as well. So um, just making sure I set the best example for him as possible and uh, – doing whatever it takes to uh, help, him, help him in his growth. Question for both of you. <clears throat> uh, a lot of teams come in, they take game one, and the idea is like, well, okay, you know, got the split, we're good to go back. And instead you guys came out and just took this from the very start. What does that say about this team's approach to things and what was the key to that tonight? Um, I mean, Finch, you do a great job of putting emphasis on um, it's not about who win the first game. You know, you want to win every game. I mean, so you don't want to split. You want to win two here and have home court advantage and then try to win two at home. But I do want to just shout out Jay McDaniels, man, yeah. before I, I get out of here. Um, he's been phenomenal this this whole playoff run and, and this, this series in particular. Um, I think he's like a plus 51 or something and only probably had five points, took three shots in all, three game, all two games and – don't complain, keep mm -hmm. guard and keep picking up full court. And we wouldn't be the team that we are today. We wouldn't have been the team that we was in the, in the regular season. And, you know, hopefully we can keep him out there and he keeps playing like that, man, because he's definitely the X factor of the team. And everything that he brings is, is we thank him so much, man. So big shout out to Jaden for sure. For sure. I got a question for both of you as well. And when you do things like you shake, Reggie Jackson, you pointed at him, or you hit a three and you shrug, or you hit an and one and you flex. What does that do for you? And then is it also like kind of dismissing that this is a, a stage with bigger stakes and more pressure? And then same question for Kat, what does it do for the team when Ant does those type of things? Um, what it do for me, it definitely gives me energy. Um, but it's, I feel like I've always done that, um, no matter what stage is on, if it's in the regular season, the preseason. If I do something nice, I'm going, I got to let it be known. If I get an N1, I got to flex, um, make somebody fall, I'm going to point at them. Um, so, you know, and it, it brings excitement to the game. So hopefully someone tries to, like, come back and score on me or something like that. So that's probably, that's why I do it. Hell no. Nah, wait, wait, let me, let me put it like this. When Ant's out there talking his shit, I know that we in for a good night. <laughs> And Chris was in here earlier talking about how you guys really smelled blood in the water a little bit with the way you guys were defending. What do you think this team is learning about developing a killer instinct right now? Um, I think I think um, we're doing a great job of, of just trying to just pick them up early, like put pressure on everybody, uh, pressure the ball, pressure the passer, 
don't let it don't don't let it cat do a great job of just pressuring the entry pass. Don't let it be easy. Nas fronting, Cal fronting, um, trying to get our hands on everything, touching, pushing, being physical. I think that leads to um, the defensive plays that we make. And like I said, man, once again, Jaden was everywhere tonight. Steals, deflections, blocks, rebounds. He was everywhere tonight, man. So you know he he plays a major role in all of those defensive efforts that we have out there. For for both of you, what was your perspective when? Jamal Murray through the heating pad on the floor. Like, did either of you actually see it happen? And nope. then, what was your reaction, just sort of upon learning that that had happened? Um, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even know like it happened until the ref stopped the play and and um, threw the heating pack off the floor. I thought it was on somebody back or something. I didn't know it was thrown onto the court. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> No, I saw it. I just was more worried about making the layup. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> For either of you guys or both. Uh, a lot of people who had Finch's surgery would have just sat on the couch for a week. But what did it mean to you guys that he came and kind of probably pushed through a lot of pain to make this trip? I mean, it, it definitely meant a lot because for someone like me who just came off surgery on my knee and was nowhere near as major as his, uh, I can imagine the doctor told him not to travel and not to fly. And Finchy said, hell no, I'm going to be there for my team. So the leader of our team, um, you know, when you have someone who's willing to fight like that, you know, of course his troops are willing to fight just as hard for him. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> Kat, years and years ago when you came into this league mm -hmm. um, as the number one pick, you were drafted not only for your offensive talent but for your defense and the promise that everyone thought you had. Does it feel good to be getting back to that and showing your capabilities again and not you know, just being viewed as the stat stuffer and, and, the, and the big offensive player that you were? He was never viewed as a stat stuffer or just a. No, 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 I know that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, he was never viewed as that. Um, especially when I got here, I always thought he was a great defensive player. He just had to put his mind to it. <clears throat> and um, when Finchie got here, man, Finchie put emphasis on, hey, Ann and Cat, if we want to go somewhere, we got to defend. And um, like he said, that's the head of the snake. And hearing that from him, um, it pushed Cat, man. And I tell Cat, we need you to defend. Corliss tell Cat, we need you to defend the whole team. And, you know, ever since he's been back this whole year, man, since he's been at the four, he's been defending his ass off. So he's been playing great, and um, we, we hope he continues to do it. This is for both of you guys. What's the message to the fans in Minnesota now that you're going back 2-0 now, going home, got the crowd at Target Center? Just talk about what that means for you guys and what it means for this fan base. I mean, for us, I think for the message we want to send is that, you know, we're extremely – Honored and blessed that we have this opportunity to go home to up 2-0, um, <clears throat> but we're humble in this approach. You know, we 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 understand that um, we put ourselves in a great position, but as great as the position we are in, it could be very bad at the end of being on our home stand. So we just got to go out there, take care of business, do what we do, play defense at a high level, and execute even at a higher level because the defending champions, you know, you can't give them a minute of slippage at all in the game. So um, we got some things to work on, things to tighten up on practice, and we got three days to really work on our game and work on our game plan. So um, to the fans, you know, your support is super important for us to find different ways and to get that energy Friday night and Sunday. So um, definitely come out and support. Guys, I'm sure that you guys expected Denver to come out and hit you hard to start the game. Some emotional surge, and when that didn't happen, were you guys a little surprised that you were jumping on them as opposed to vice versa? And do you see them being confused at times? Do you see them losing confidence no, when, not when at the all. lead is sort of spiraling? <clears throat> no, not at all. Um, it worked in our favor tonight, man. That's all that was. Um, we made shots. They didn't. Um, that's the defending champs over there, so... Um, they're not going to come out and play like that again in game three. Um, we got to be ready to take their punch. And I always tell the team, like uh, when Finchie, when we huddle up and Finchie say, uh, we got to be ready to take their punch, I say, we're going to punch too. Shit. I mean, they're not the only one punching in the fight. So, I mean, yeah, just like that. They're not the only one that's going to come out punching. I don't give a damn if we go up 3 or for the game four, we're going to come out punching too. So they got to be ready to take our punch, and we'll be ready to take their punch. But, yeah, I don't see no slippage in their games. They just missed shots tonight. They'll be ready to go game three, and we will be. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank yes, sir.